Welcome to the Smorgasbord Podcast, episode 19, where we talk about a variety of different things, uncensored, unedited, un- unfiltered. Sorry. Today, we have f- my friend, Alan. Alan, how are you doing today? Come on, how are you? I am very tired. It'd uh, be like that all the time, bro. Yeah, well, so originally, I planned to have you on here a lot sooner, but you know, we're 19 episodes in, finally, we got you on, because of your busy schedule. Um, so I want to talk about what is like our story, uh, because we have a history with like with people because we're very people. More, we, yeah. we work the crowd a lot in a lot of places. So, what are your, some of your tell us some of your stories with uh, females? Because uh, I know because the most recent one <laughs> off camera to give everybody a quick backstory. Basically, this girl that you used to talk to didn't like you. But then she randomly hit you up talking about she did want you. What is the update of that situation? <clears throat> so I have like a good and bad experience with a girl. Right? Amen. And I was like, okay, I like this girl, right? Mm-hmm. So I told her and it was like this back and forth thing, blah, blah, blah. And then she started asking me questions. This is before all of this. So yeah, like, I remember this. Questions talking about them. You think that we would make a good couple? I'm like, yeah, I guess. And then she just keeps asking me these random questions. So I'm like, okay, maybe it'll happen. Maybe it'll happen, or maybe it won't. Oh, yeah. So then she brings up a point about one of my other friends, who's also in JRTC with me, that she likes. She's like, I'm still not over him. Blah blah blah. Just let me think on it. And me having my experience with girls, I'm like, that right there. That's a no. I'm like, okay, now I'll let you, quote unquote, think on it. And never talk to me again after that. And then, it'd be like that. It'd be like that. She texted me while I'm watching one of my shows, you know, I'm chilling, riding in my room. And she's texting me, talking about some, hey. I'm like, hi. (laughs) She's like, what you doing? I'm like, watching my show. And I asked her what she's doing. She's like, just thinking. And me being me, <laughs> I asked her what. <laughs> we both would have did that. We both would have been like, and yeah. <laughs> what? I'm like, yeah. About, you know, that's the trap right there. Oh, they yeah. They just think they're doing. You can just say it. You can say it. Like, just, yeah. What did she say? So, she was like, thinking. And I'm like, about. I'm like, whoa, wait a minute. I'm sitting here trying to watch myself go on a whole different spectrum of this topic. And she just straight was just like, yo, I'm trying to I'm trying to smash. <laughs> exactly. I'm like <laughs> No, I like I said this I said this briefly, but that's basically like the a like the twelve AM you up call for like kids. Exactly. Like she hit me with the you up. Like She literally just went up, she was just like, yo, I ain't gonna lie. I'm trying to smash. <laughs> <laughs> oh my! All right, so continue. So okay, she did that. I'm like, I'm thinking that she's with her friends doing this, right? And then she asks me a question. It starts off with the "Are you?" It's like, "Am I what?" Big pops. I was like, "Huh?" Oh no, yeah, no. She was like, "Oh yeah." She was because you showed me the text messages. You were like. Are you horny right now? And I'm just like, um, you're just like, not really you. She's like, I kind of am. And he said, big pops. I lost it. <laughs> I was like, what? <laughs> I was on a whole different leg. I'm trying to watch my show. I wasn't even thinking about this right now. I was like, okay, this is a joke, huh? She was like, no. Nah. I was like, okay. So I'm just saying, she is good looking, though. We have to, hey, we have to address let me, that. Let me explain this. Let me, let me put you on a, a, a whole different spectrum right now. Okay. I already told you that I like you. We had this whole back and forth. Then you, then you ghost me, right? Yeah. You don't text me until quarantine happens. Yeah. After all of this, all of a sudden you like me. This was, she was in a bad place. She was in a bad place. What bad place? You were looking like you were 
<laughs> You're kind of far. You need to speak up a little bit. Oh, my bad. So I was like, what? That's like, you look like you're doing perfectly fine when we were talking. Good, wait, so she said she was in a bad place and you were asking what bad place? Yeah. Okay. No, I didn't ask for that, but I was like that. I was oh, like, okay. what? That's Mate, I don't even know. Was she like, did she drink and do, or smoke any of that? I have no idea. Cause I, fa- I'm, I just had some suspicions when I look at her. I'm just like, dog, you, you do something. You do something. Fantastic. Based on how she hangs out, who, who she hangs out with, and also like, you got to do something. Something. But I don't know. So what's the situation with it now? Cause I remember you were like, cause she then was like, let me think about it. Let me think about it. I'm like, okay, I'll go along. Joke. I just hit her with the eye. You hit her with the white? The eye. Oh, okay. Like, just, just let me think on it. Blah, blah, blah. All that. And I was like, okay. See you. And then she hasn't talked to me. So, like. Are you going to try to text her first or are you going to? Dog, Alan, just be like, yo, and just try to have a little conversation with her. Because I promise you, she'll probably be like, she'll probably drop it. Or she'll be like, look, I'm trying to this see you, big it. pop. <laughs> 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 I don't care. Stop this, bro. You, you realize what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. So I've told this story on the podcast before. Um, but I never, I said your name, but this is the first time you've ever been on here. Would you like to tell the story from your perspective of how you literally, I had to save you from getting a butt kicked, Justice from getting, going to jail, and basically the entire friendship just fall, a relationship falling apart, then being proceeded to be stabbed in the back. You want to tell them your, your side of the story? <laughs> All right, so basically what happened was, one day, I was sitting with Justice, you, did you already tell him about Megan all that? Yeah, yeah. I said I said the, the right. whole thing, I, um, but just in case, go ahead and reiterate your side. All right, so she sits with this group at lunch, right? And one of the pe- pre- people in that group was one of my old wrestling teammates, Cohen, right? Mm-hmm. So I was like, okay, I'll go sit over there with him. I was eating lunch and uh, sitting by the wall, and she just lays on me, so I'm like, okay. Me being the, the okay. brother to everybody, I'm like, okay, this is normal. So, out of nowhere, she lays on me. And I'm like, okay, and that's lunch, right? So then she texts me while I'm in homeroom. Like, yo, just to, to, to see, see someone re- recorded us at lunch. I was like, okay, what about But, 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 but like, you know, you have to explain, you have to explain the, the position of the because because you can't just say they let she laid on him. It wasn't like that. No, you literally were sitting, right? And she slayed in between your legs. Yeah. On me. So I'm like, okay, this is because that's happened to me so many times, right? Yeah, because you're because you're a pimp. It's that plain and simple. <laughs> I don't care. I don't care what like dog, you'll literally be cuddling with like five girls in like five minutes. I'm just like, dog. And I warned you too. I said, "Don't you can't always do that in high school." And the yeah. minute you get to high school, what happens? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you did. And I was like, I, I was like, okay, so I'm always a brother to everybody since I have so many siblings. I guess. Si- siblings? No, no. He's he, no. For people out there watching, he downplays and calls them siblings. They're not. They, they are infatuated with him. There is no, there is no relation. There is none. He is, he's, he is lying to you people. That is not, that is not a lie. Like, the only person that would even, you would even like say was related to you was uh, Malika, and that was even a stretch. Bruh, like I'm not even lying. Like every single time, it's like, oh, you're like a brother, you're a best friend, blah blah blah. I'm like, okay, I have all these siblings. It doesn't matter because all these quote unquote siblings do the same thing. I'm like, 
Okay, so anyways, so yeah, she was laying between your legs. My friend, uh, then one of his friends recorded a video, caught y'all, caught y'all lacking. All right, what happened next? So then you you text me at the end of the four text. Yeah. I'm already like, okay. Because I said, don't get on that bus because he was ready to fight. He was ready to fight the anyway. world. I'm talking about. I didn't care. If I got in a fight, I got in a fight. No, because but like, the whole thing was, is like, he was ready to fight me because I was like, dog, it ain't like that. You need to calm down. He got right in my face with his fist cut. Like, it is like that. I'm just holding him like, dog, you need to calm down. It ain't really like that. You need to relax. It ain't that deep. And then. I um, didn't. Like, <laughs> I told you so many times. I'm like, okay, if he fights me, he fights me. Right. No, cause no, because allow me, because because to be fair, you're both my friends, and I'm not gonna at the while you did what you did was you you did get caught slipping. You're just the idiot that that she chose. Um, at the same time, you as much as you may think you deserve a butt whooping, you really don't. Cause in the day you're gonna you're fighting over a girl. I don't care who you are. No girl is worth that. And on top of that. You were just gonna. You weren't gonna defend yourself. Your mindset was just, I'm gonna let him wail on me. And I'm like, are you out of your mind? If a, you, if I, I if I walk, if I walk up and I see you two quote unquote fighting, and you're just sitting there letting him hit you, I am going to drop him and I'm going to slap you. I do not care. <laughs> I wasn't gonna let anybody hit. Me. Like I'm going to defend myself, but I'm saying, like if he fought me, he fights me. Like I'm not just gonna let him sit there beat me up. That's one. That disrespects my pride as a saying, a black saying. Amen. <laughs> Amen. I'll just about, but that like that makes me feel weak, right? Mm-hmm. And I know how to protect myself. Yes. My sir. Parents, if, my, if my parents were involved, if that fight actually happened, my parents were involved, they would have been like, "Okay, cool. Yeah, you protect yourself. You're fine. Yeah, you're fine. I wouldn't care if I got like suspended or." Or, yeah, no, that's how I would be. I'd be like, look, man, I did what I did. I went to court, I went to court. I'm going to tell them what happened, and I'm, I'm going to move on. Right? Yeah. So, all right, we keep going off. So, basically, he wanted to fight you. I texted you about it. What happened next? Because my, my memory is kind of spotty about it. All right, so, since I had after school, then uh, it was the next day. No, I got home and we started talking about it. Yeah, because I was I kept on hopping from call to call with you. Yeah. Then I call went on call with him. Then went on call with you, and all that stuff. And it was just it was crazy. It was crazy. It was yeah. just just drama. But it, it, for sure, I don't remember what episode it is, but I've talked about this story like multiple times, and and I'm just like so much for a freshman year and hanging out with. "Quote unquote older mature kids," because Jesus Christ, because <laughs> the girl's now a junior and the guy already graduated. So I'm like, okay, yeah. Imagine having your first year of high school be drama. Be? Alan, I don't know what it is with us, but we keep running into these situations, and I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's female I specifically, know. but I, I don't know. I just don't know what it is. We're drama magnets for some reason, like. But we hate it. Exactly. So I don't understand. We, we attract drama, but we hate it at the same time. That doesn't even make any sense, though. Is that really de- like like logically that shouldn't work like that? It shouldn't. If you hate something, you avoid it. But like it just it just comes to it. We can't stop it, and it's so weird. Yeah, I don't. I don't even know, mate. It's just. But, uh, okay, so, I basically, I'm talking to you guys, I'm saying, look, both of you to have a private conversation, and all that stuff, just us three, and then, then I'll have Justice, I said, look, you gotta go talk to your girl, and they, this was all agreed upon, so I pull up on, that at school today, it's supposed to happen, I just see his friend that recorded the, uh, the video, just posted up at the front door, just talking, just waiting for you. And I'm like, yo, what you doing? He's like, I'm waiting for him. I'm like, relax, dog. It ain't that serious. I'm about to handle it. And he's just like, it's my friend, it's my friend, homie. You can't do that. And I'm like, look, bro, calm down. He was ready to go to war already. And I'm like, you need to relax. 
because he told all his hot friend, hot headed hood friends who were just ready to just to, just to beat you down in the middle of the hallway. And I'm like, yo, relax. I'm trying to make something happen here. And then we were about to skip to start talking. And then his girlfriend pulled up trying to jump in the conversation. I'm just like, get your move, man. Exactly. And then he oh, then it fell apart. Awesome. Then it fell apart because then it was like everybody came down. And then she, uh, Megan started yelling at all of us. And Justice was like yelling at her kind of. And then like uh, his friends was just like was trying to stay by. And then she yelled at us. And I was just like, all right, bro, we need to move along. And so they had a private conversation. He was just like, he was ready to dump her. But he didn't because he was just like, like even to this day. And she, I can say this because she probably won't watch it. Because he literally has said like to me multiple times, he said, I love her still. But it's now hard to because now this isn't the first time she also has messed up multiple times. So she's so he's literally said, "Yeah, uh, it's hard to love her now." <laughs> I don't remember when you told me that too. I was like, "Why are you mad at me if she's already messed?" Oh my god! So I heard that I was just like, "Jesus Christ!" So then through that I went to go. Thanks before, similar to this one. What? What does? Uh, that she's made multiple mistakes. Plus, like on top that. of that, she made it worse for herself when she tried to get you to lie about it. Like the first situation. Yeah. She literally was just like, just go with it. Just go with it. I was like, huh? She, he was just like, no. What? <laughs> just the confusion in your voice was so amazing. You're just like, bro, what is happening? Like, why? Like, <laughs> she tried to try to get me to trouble. Pretty much, she was. She asked. She sent me the screenshot. And I was just like, man. And I sent that to him. I'm just like, dog, your girl needs to be kept in check, not him. And he was just like, he even to this day, he still doesn't like you, even though like he doesn't like he just doesn't want to talk to you, even though you helped helped him with the situation of like where he was he was about to get jumped, and you like helped me watch to see if the guy was gonna stay out the hallway. Yeah. He even, like, he recognized that. And just, I, saw, I told him even when we were walking, like, across the school, hiding behind the buses. We were, I was just like, yo, he ain't that much of an asshole, is he? And he's just like, yeah, you're right. I was like, there you go. And then he was like, but then the funny thing is, he's like, I wish I could never fight over a girl. I'm just like, dog, you're about to do that with your girlfriend. Don't even start. And, he, and then, I, then I checked him. He was just like, yeah, all right. So, so no, I think he understands. He just doesn't, just doesn't want to be around you now. And, 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 the, I get that I'm gonna and all I'm saying is this, bro. And I'm gonna put it off record. I'm gonna put it off the camera. We'll talk to you about it later. But I've heard some things, man, that he's doing, or he's he's got he's got set up. So I haven't talked to him in a minute, a little bit, in a little bit, like about a week or two. But I I know he's got some things in the works, and I'm letting you know right now. Shit going down. <laughs> I'm just, I don't know if he's done it, but I'm just saying he has some stuff planned. I don't know if he still got it planned. I don't know if he canceled it because he's not hanging out with his, hanging out with her. But oh man, I heard that. Yeah. It's just like that's wild. But like in general, even even in middle school, Alan, we've had trouble with these females. All right, we've had, we've had you have had that weird on and off friendship, but not friendship. No, like friendship more than friendship. Friendship with like Ryan's with Ryan. Yeah. Uh, and you know, and I gradually resented you for it because you would like take her side on all the arguments, even though I knew she was wrong. But I digress. <laughs> like that was the moment I was just like, "This guy's an ass kisser." Like for that, in that small moment, I was like, "You were kissing ass at this moment." There's no way. Yeah. I was just so when I heard, I was just I like, "What?" I admit it, I did. I was a pimp. No, I was, man, I was just like, because you were like, you can't say it. I'm like, the hell I can. <laughs> she over here want to be a lawyer. And she's almost so, man, don't you ever say. And the thing is, I actually held myself back. Because the big argument I'm talking about is I talked about it kind of on here. I don't remember. But it was basically, we got an article in eighth grade about should females play football? And I was like, okay, yes, against other females. The whole thing, the whole thing, like, boy, the, the whole co-ed sports, if it's physical, don't do it. And you were bringing up wrestling, and I'm like, dog, 
We've seen niggas get slammed in wrestling. We've both wrestled. We both know this is a possibility. And that's still an issue. You know, how they do it is, it is beyond me. And, but, so they then bring up, I said, it's the same thing if you were to put Conor McGregor and Ronda Rousey in a ring. And you pay, and you pay to see that. You're paying. It's like going up to a house like that with an abusive husband and then just paying him to watch them kick the crap out of the wife. And that's a mistake because you said it in front of her. I, I said it to her to prove a point. And she went, don't you dare say that. I Don't you ever say that. I was in a domestic abuse household. And I promise you, Alan, I just really wanted to say really bad. I said, okay, who was the abuser? Bruh. Who was it? You would have got the class in trouble, bruh. I don't even care. I should have said it. I'm like, was it your mama? I rest my case. Was it your, was that, was it, was it a, was it a, your mama's boyfriend? And case closed. It is done. And she just stormed out the room. And I started ranting, talking about how she wanted to be a lawyer and all that stuff. I'm like, dog, you can't even handle an eighth grade conversation about feminism, gender equality, like gender, like science, which is simple logic, or like feminism. Hi, and she wants to be a lawyer. So I'm like, hopefully she's doing better. I haven't talked to her since. Uh, I don't know if, have you? Uh, it was only on like video games. She's doing well. Like she just doing her now. That's good. Is she? I don't even know. Is she? Is she gay or is she like what is she? I don't know. I think she's in between. That's the first time I don't. Oh I have no bad. idea. But yeah, I know she plays video games now. So what? That's 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 nice. That's nice. What she play? Uh, like Fortnite, Minecraft, at occasion. Uh, probably more other games, but those are the only two I know of now. Okay. Uh, uh, but yeah, but um, what other? I know we got some more. I don't know. I understand. That's a, the big thing is that girls are confusing. The biggest story was in eighth grade. Was when like Alyssa liked me, but she um, wouldn't date me. It, when I tell you that was the closest thing to an aneurysm I've had in a minute, that was the closest thing to an aneurysm. I was just like, what? Yeah, I like you, but I'm not thinking. No. no, she's just like, I like you, but I can't see us together because it hasn't happened yet. You toe. How about you give it a chance? And she's just like, I'll think about it because you are cute and you're a cool guy. And then she just is like, on Valentine's Day, she's just like, yeah, no. And I'm like, Ooh, did I ever tell you about the girl who dumped me on Valentine's Day, by the way? Or a day after? Yesterday. What? I was like, really? You told me that yesterday on the phone. What about the girl that dumped me after Valentine's Day? Yeah. Hey, man. <laughs> oh, to... I was like, oh, my gosh. Yeah, man. Not... And I went, I'll talk about, I went all out for her. I went all out. So I was just like, this is mad. There was another girl that, that she said, after four days of dating me, she got bored of me. And she just said, I don't want to be with you anymore. Kid you not, four days in, she was just like, I'm bored of you and I feel like I'm gonna be, I don't want to be with you. And I'm like, huh. You can't go all, all out for them. If you go all out there, Dog, you know what I'm saying? You know my paragraphs are legendary. I wrote like a coded one. Or I posted it on my story. The same day she dumps me. That's what I mean. Ain't that some trifling? <laughs> That's. <laughs> Bro, I was like, yo, that was wild. And that was. That shit was crazy. Also, Al, I got to tell you about my recent story. Most recent thing that happened it was like two days ago. And. Okay. Oh my god, this guy needs to okay, sorry. Um, so basically what had happened was basically I was chilling. I I saw I mean I know you saw the 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 thing I just uploaded, the, the things I posted on Instagram recently. Uh those, those photos, right? Oh uh, yeah. So this um so at this time I'm 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 dating someone. I'm dating this one at someone at this point. So yeah, I have a girlfriend. And so Basically, I'm chilling and people are liking it and it got like 60 likes in like an hour. That was crazy to me. 
And then this random girl just texts me out of nowhere. Random. Has no posts and it ain't like one of those, it ain't a prostitute. It's just like a regular girl. It yeah. looks around our age. Has no posts, but she has a like profile picture. And she looks all right, I guess. She definitely isn't better than who I'm dating. I'm like, she looks all right. Yeah. And basically, she just texts me out of nowhere. Yo, you fine as, as fuck. And I'm like, thanks lol because i was like i was like this is a setup i'm being so hard because like the black in me is just like this is a trap i am being set up and she was just like she was like are you single and i'm like nah i'm taken she was like damn for real and i'm like yeah and she was like what if i could do what if i can change your mind i'm just like what do you mean because i really i was so confused i was like what is she talking about and she said nudes and i'm just like i'm good g thank you though and she was like, dang, do you consider head cheating? And I'm like, yeah. Because she, she said, I can give a head. And I'm like, I'm good, dude. Trust me. And when I saw that, she, I kept shutting her down. She then said, I'm just kidding, G. Your girlfriend sent me to talk to you to see if you would cheat. So I'm like, okay. And then this time I was like, I already called her because I had the suspicion already. I, I tried to text my girlfriend. And she didn't answer. So I was just like, okay, this must be a setup. And I just said, all right, bye, G. And she was like, all right, peace. And then at the very end, she was like, bye, daddy. And then I just didn't answer. And I was just, I just left the, I, I, I put laughing emojis. And then I just didn't answer again. And so I was just like, okay, she must have sent someone. And then I, so I, call, I, call, I text her, I sent her a voice message on Snapchat, uh, my girlfriend. She was like, I was just like, yo. Did you send somebody to come talk to me to see if, like, if I was lawyer or not? She was like, what are you talking about? She was like, um, this random girl started hitting me up. And I took screenshots and I sent them to her. And she got really upset at me and, and stuff. Which, I mean, at first I didn't know why. Because it didn't make sense. I said that I had a girlfriend and I wasn't interested at all. And so she was mad at me the entire day and then stuff. And so, and then I, we finally get on, like, phone call. After she was been like being like petty and just being a, being like an a hole to me all day, and I didn't say nothing back. She was like, we then got in an argument like at night, and it was like she literally went. She was just like, it's not the fact that you said that; it's the fact that you said, "What do you mean?" and 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 thanks, lol. Why are you being nice? Why aren't you and, like? I'm like because I'm a nice person. Like I'm not gonna. And I just I was just like, and she was like, nah. And she's like Mexican, but she's using the N word. So I'm just like, "What are you talk? Okay, calm down." Like, <laughs> like she's like, "No, nigga." I'm like, "Bro, calm, calm down, calm down." All right, is ain't that the? I, I was trying, I was trying. Uh, and she was just like, basically wore me down to where I feel like an a hole because I basically I didn't I wasn't rude enough or I, I didn't cut her off immediately. I I kept on talking to her. She was like, "You kept the conversation going," and that's why I feel like that. And I'm just like, all right, cool. I'm done being nice. And this is what I want to tell you is that I'm done being nice to people because I've been used and I have been, been been thrown around. And so yeah, I'm officially done with being nice to people. And she's just now, and now she's like, she's like, she, now she's more okay. But she was upset for me like two or three days, and I'm just like, okay, cool. And but yeah, that basically happened like two three days ago. I was just like, this is ridiculous. Be like that, bro. I have the screenshots, so I'll, I'll show you. I'll show you them after. <laughs> but I was like, dog, it was like, this isn't a prostitute, like one of those Instagram ones. And it looks like a, like I thought she's some. She's like, no, nah, I'm not, I'm not six. I'm, I, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a growing, I'm a growing woman. I'm not a little girl. I'm not going to send you that stuff. Send someone to do that. I would, I'm, I trust you. And she was like, okay. And then she said, I lost, all, I lost a lot of her trust. So, of course, knowing me, and I already am hard on myself, and now I, already, I feel more like an asshole, even though in reality, I did a good thing in saying that I have a girlfriend, but I digress. Um, so, yeah, that basically happened, like, two nights ago. So, I think we're good right now, but just, I don't understand people sometimes, especially females. I don't understand them sometimes. They confuse me. They hurt. They, make, they give me headaches, specifically. Yeah. Uh, but on to another serious topic. This whole George Floyd situation. Obviously, the number one 
thing being talked in the country and it's a movement that's happening globally. But the problem is that, and you and you're gonna back me up, we've done some research on the case more. And we've and and here's the argument that that I have, and I feel like you partially agree with, is the fact that when it comes to certain people, like police brutality is obviously a wrong thing. No one's gonna justify that it's wrong. But at the same time, we should stop trying, as specifically the black community, we should stop trying to make the victims angels. And what I mean by that is that if people did their research, that George Floyd is actually a criminal and like he's been to prison nine to ten times. Does that mean he deserves to die? No. But does it need to be talked about and be like, hey, he wasn't exactly the greatest human. And he was just like, like, it wasn't like just a dad who went to work nine to five, came home, brought the bills home. No, when he was, when he was arrested, it was like, he was, he was intoxicated with meth and heroin or, or fentanyl or whatever. And he's gone to jail like five times total or prison five times total. Like they did like two stints of nine to 10 months each for like cocaine possession. And then he went to jail for five prison for five years for robbing a black pregnant woman. So the narrative of like, he's like an angel. And I feel like it's the same way with a lot of people that they talk about, but no one wants to say it. And because if you think that way, or you don't buy the narrative of the Black Lives Matter movement, you're seen as a coon or Uncle Tom or just a slave head or whatever, which I think is completely false because the whole problem with that is like, you think differently than the masses, you're stupid. And I'm like, no, that's not how that works. Cause a lot of stupid, a lot of people can be wrong. What do you think? So, but, like, my take on it, yes. George Floyd was not, like, the innocent pe- person that people who don't know him make him out to be. And I agree that he was, wasn't was the angel that people make out to make him out to be. He does not, he didn't deserve to die. Mm-hmm. And... He was intoxicated, yes. But this is all over a twenty dollars that somebody gave, that somebody reported, which was later proven to be real. Yeah, real. That's no, that's what I mean. Like, no. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. Right. No, obviously. That's what I mean. Like people, when you say that argument, they immediately go to, especially black people, they're gonna go to, oh, you're justifying the death of him, and you're and you're you're justifying, you're like defending the cop. No, we're not. It's the simple thing of look. Sometimes there are jacked up people, regardless of race, religion, or whatever. Yeah. And, and that we're on the job. The thing is, they've had multiple complaints and other things happening and they're still they were still on the fourth. It took all of this plus recording Yeah to get them off the force. So no racism is not being getting worse. It's just being recorded and captured. Well again it isn't it isn't here's the thing, Alan. It's it's, it has it really at the end of the day, it doesn't really have to do with race that much. It has more to do with culture. Yeah. I, I'm not saying race isn't like a factor because race is always a factor in anything we do because it just is. And if they're saying anything is void of race consideration, they're lying. Uh, but uh, when it comes to stuff like that, it's more of a culture thing because like, like I said, as when it comes to the Black Lives Matter movement, I don't support it because at the end, for, for me at least, my personal experience, I have received more racism from the black community than I have white people, and I've received and I we and I've obviously received a lot of racism from white people because surprise, surprise, I'm biracial. So again, when you when you when you're told by black by a black person that you're not black enough to be part of this community, or the whole light skin versus dark skin be bullshit, 
Uh, and then in the same sentence, they'll say, but we need to be united. It, it, it look, I look at them and I'm like, you're the, possibly the biggest idiot I've ever met in my life. And it's a, and basically, that, I feel like that's what the Black Lives Movement, a lot of them are filled of. It's filled with a bunch of people who, are, who will be united under circumstance. But let's you say what I just said to like them. You watch how united we'll be because they're not going to understand. They're, they're going to listen to what I said, but not what I mean. And they're just going to be like, you're part of the problem. You're a clown. Because I think differently. I didn't go with the same choices my parents or my grandparents went. And I decided to go with the other side of, of, the, of the fence or whatever. So they see that as, okay, you're no longer black or whatever that means, which is dumb. And so I've had that one experience. Like, a portion of elementary school, I was like, my mom taught me to be a very articulate person. Yeah. I didn't have that stereotype that I was part of a gang or a thug or anything like yeah, that. Yeah, and you speak like a white kid. And like, no, it sounds like I read yeah. a book. People say I was, oh, I was being white because I was speaking like this. Or yeah. I was being white because I wanted to pass my class or anything like that. And I understand your point. I, The Black Lives Matter movement does have ignorant black people just like that. But it also has the black people that are like us who have to... But, but even with that, even with that, but the people like us will be villainized and will be excluded from that movement. So our movement is whole. Let's fix. Let's fix ourselves first, then we yeah. can fix the world. And and the thing is, we won't even recognize it. There's a difference between fixing. We can't fix it. Obviously, there's steps to make. We won't even recognize our oh, yeah. problems. And I say we because it's yeah. including us. We won't recognize our own problems. So how can we, so how are we supposed to, like, here's the thing. If you can't fix your own house and, and have your house full of problems, how are you supposed to present them to the world and thinking that the world's going to give a damn when you don't? And that, and I agree. I a hundred percent agree with that. My mom, my mom and I had to talk about this whole situation, right? And she said something like this. Before we can make change to the world, we have to make change with ourselves. And if we want to make change to the world, we have to get inside, get inside the system and change it from inside instead of trying to break it down from the outside. If you take a whole skyscraper, right, and you try to break it down from the outside, how long do you think that will take? Pretty long. Now, if inside and attack the support and the things that are keeping it up, then how long do you think that will take? 10 minutes tops. Back. So, I know this is going to go online and everything, so I want to say something to, to the Black Lives Matter movement right now, right? If we want change, one, we have to change ourselves. We have to change our community that we live in so we're not seen as the ruthless, violent people that we are meant out to be or stereotyped to be. And if we want to change this system to not be as corrupt, we have to get inside and we have to change that. Now, that is going to be hard because we're human and as yeah. humans, we're power hungry, right? Yeah. You saw how when a black police officer... Back, back in the old days, a black police officer was with a white police officer, treated us the same way, right? As mm -hmm. a white police officer. It's because we're power hungry. Well, again... When we, get that power, when we get that sense of power, we're blinded by it. Yeah, and the stuff we're saying right now will get us assassinated. But, um, like, but again, I'll, with that, in, in, in that aspect, I'll say this, and this is the big thing that people don't understand, that specifically... The Black Lives Matter movement doesn't understand. But people don't understand in general. You control the media, you control the power. That's why they killed Tupac because he was going to make movies on how his life went, and he started to control the people and he started to control the media. And they said, "Oh, we can't have that." So, so everybody who, who in the positions, and I'm pretty sure you and I will, will grow up and we'll probably understand, we understand this now, so we'll be able to come up with ideas or whatever. We took we had you control the media, you can control everything because regardless of like whatever the politics say 
of like, oh, we're a democracy. We're not because they still filter your information. So if you want to call it communist or whatever you want to call it, they're all, they're all full of shit. So yeah. what you want to do is you want to control the media and you can and you get your message out to make sure and make sure people listen. And and yeah, coronavirus has helped us with this when, when it comes to slowing down the world and having people listen and the world is being changed. But if you want it to be effective, you can't use George Floyd's name as a as a as a thing, as an excuse to steal a TV. Like, like there is no reason for you to be looting a, like, like, like they, again, I keep referencing, but I'll say it again. What, what was the purpose of looting the college football hall of fame? What? And all they did, they burned that down. They burned it down. They, they really destroyed everything. They just wrote F12 on the CNN thing. And I'm like, okay, what do you, okay. And then, um, and then the big, and then, the, but yeah, you need to control the media. You control the media and you, and you educate the people and you know, and you know how to do that. You control everything because you control, you control, you control how the story is told. So control. And so that's what they want to do. Is, um, I don't fully support the riots and the looting. The I support looting, I organized non-violence. I, that, I support that's... organized violence. I don't support the riots. I, I'm the, 50-50 between the riots, and I'm zero with the looting. The looting, yeah. that's just people taking advantage of it. Yeah. The riots... I'm 50-50. I understand that. So, because, like, for me, they should have had more organized... Like, if they had organized violent protests, yeah, cool, do that. That makes, for me, makes more sense, because peaceful protesting, in general, has turned into a fad. It has yeah. turned into a fad. It has turned into a trend. It has turned into something that has now lost its meaning. And people have done it for everything. And some things, and it became a fad when Trump got elected. When the whole Women's March thing happened, after that, we, they, they've done nothing. Because they marched over it. And, they, and a lot of people jumped to a lot of conclusions about stuff that was going to happen. And it ended up either never happening or it wasn't happening to the extent that they thought. So... They then decide we're going to go protest for instead of instead of nothing. There's this giant overreach of we're not going to protest anything, so we're going to protest everything, and and even and even in that in that respect, I'm just like I I don't think peaceful protest is going to get done. So I agree with that. But when it comes to the looting and rioting, who are just it's just a bunch of people who are using the name of the Black Lives Matter movement just an excuse to steal a copy of Two K Twenty. Yeah, no, I don't support that at all. But when it comes to organized violence, I'm like I lean during that. I lean lean during that way, or more because we need to be more organized. That was the biggest thing. The first night came out, it was just we're gonna steal everything, we're gonna destroy everything, and it's not like everything anything's everything has come out bad from it. There has been some good things. Like I talk about this with my mom, and she disagreed with me completely on what I was saying. And she was, and uh, but and uh, the the NASCAR, uh, they banned Confederate flags, and I'm pretty sure people are gonna be upset because we, we live in the South. Uh, but yeah. but yeah, that's so there has been some good things happening from it. But again, I I, I feel like the number one thing they should be doing, trying to do, is control the media. You have to control all the ways to, to get it out to all the people. If not look, if you can, if not globally, just countrywide. If not countrywide, locally, you do that. You hit a bunch of spots. And you do all that, and you push it out, and then you'll be able to do something. But if you control the media, you control everything because you control the story. You control what is being said. Exactly. Because they did not say anything about George Floyd, about his criminal record. They never said anything about. Anyone else? Because I'm pretty sure uh, Trayvon Martin, he had a criminal record. Again, doesn't make it right. No, I'm just saying. Well, Trayvon Martin, he... Um, I'm he not too educated on that case, so I was just like, I was hesitant, because I know he did something. Yeah, he um, Prior to him grabbing some candy and stuff. Yeah. And again, does that justify him dying? No. No. But what 
like we can't like always go to. He's an angel baby boy and all that stuff. Yeah, no, I I didn't buy it. I can't buy it. They never deserve to die. No. But we're saying, does he deserve to be put as an angel? And yes, he's young. Yes, he probably did some stupid things. Does he deserve his second chance at life? Absolutely. But to say that he was perfect, and my mom was like, no one is saying that. And I'm like, you don't have to say it. Look around. No one is talking about it. Everyone's like, he's holier than thou. George Floyd is holier than thou. And and this dude was over here just trumped up on drugs. And he could have been hustling for his family. Could have been. But at the same time, he could have also been doing it for him and not really doing it. And now that he died, his daughter's now like, daddy changed the world. Technically speaking, he did. This always he did. No, he absolutely did. Happened. Now he did. But I'm telling you. Yeah. After it, overall, he was a, he was just a straight up criminal. I mean, that's undefutable. That's fact. And if you bring that up, people are going to see us as coons. And all that stuff and, uh, and uncle tom because we don't we don't buy the narrative that they always try to push and i'm like well again you have to educate yourself so education is the number one thing you have to do then on top of that you have to also like i said control the media and me keeping on saying that is going to end up me getting shot but it's fine um so yeah but and that's what, that's, so after i watched the interview on his family about this whole situation they brought up his criminal, criminal criminal record, right? That's why they moved to Minnesota. So he was trying to withdraw from drugs, but that was, you know that obviously didn't work as well as he wanted. The thing is, they, I, to they want to push that, but I don't believe that. Restart, right? He, he wanted a restart, right? He didn't want that. But he wasn't restarting. That's the thing. They don't understand. He his his criminal record dated from 1998 to 2014. Because he, because he, that was his first time he got in jail, and the last time he got out of jail was 2014. After the five year, after the five years he spent in jail for robbing that pregnant lady with those group of friends. From 2014 to 2020, you mean to tell me he was getting his life together, and then 20, and then the day he got pulled over and got killed was the day he happened to be high on, ket, on like fentanyl, methamphetamines, and was carrying was was carrying a bag of coke. He could have been. But I'm just saying, if you want to think, want to play the odd game here, how is it going to look? Exactly. So while I do, I do hope that was what happened. I don't think it is. Um, like I said, I feel like the media is covering what they want because of surprise, surprise, it's the media. Uh, I believe there's a lot of more information out that is, isn't being talked about. Um, I feel like there's a lot of things that we can do better as a community and it starts with, uh, us and then going out to the world and helping others. Cause even as a biracial kid, um, half Latino and they, and Latinos definitely don't like each other. So like, they just don't like, like my mom hates when she gets called, uh, other, other things or, or anything in general. There's always like Dominicans is a big thing. They think because they speak some Spanish, it'll be darker than both of us combined. I'm trying to salsa that shit off, talking about some no nah, man, I'm not black. I'm, I'm I'm this, and I'm like, you're an idiot. You over here looking like you came from Nigeria, talking about you're not black. Shut up. And it's a specifically a Dominican thing, but it's part of the Hispanic community. And I'm like, and I saw a post from one of my uh, a post I saw on Instagram. I have it saved. It's like. The only difference between Puerto Ricans, Haitians, Dominicans, and, and, and is where the boat is where the boat came off, dropped them off. Yeah, and that's a hundred percent. That's it. And I'm like, end of the day, y'all are African, y'all. Some of y'all Spaniards, some of y'all, y'all all y'all Native American in a way, and then y'all whoever colonized y'all is whoever colonized y'all. But end of the day, you black man. Exactly. And they'll be darker than wood itself. They'll be talking about. Trying to speak Spanish and salsa that stuff off. Nah, man, I'm I'm not that. I'm not black, man. Like soy dominicano, whatever the hell, or whatever. All that stuff. I'm like you're stupid, cause you're darker than me. And if I'm black, what the heck does that make you? Exactly. So I be seeing that. I'm just like, yeah. So, and I, and I say from my personal experience, I'll say, when it comes to their own people, 
I'll say black people, the black community and the Hispanic community, in my experience and what I've seen, are have are more racist when it comes to other looking down on other people and looking down upon themselves and each other than white people. And the reason I say that is because I again, like I said, I've experienced more racism than in them from them combined than I have from white people. And I've and obviously we've had the whole thing where I've had stories in middle school. I can tell you plenty of stories about white people, but then I can also y'all have the same comments of you're not black enough or you don't speak Spanish or you don't look Puerto Rican, so you ain't you don't speak Spanish, so you're not this, you're not that. And I have the Mexican dudes and all these other dudes and all these people telling me this. And and then the white people definitely ain't going to accept me. So again, how am I supposed to fight or fight for a community that isn't going to fight for me? Now, I will say, no. So when I told you that, um, that elementary school experience, um, it wasn't a whole group. You've experienced a whole group. I haven't. Mine was like, one specific person yeah who would say that and because the black kids the black kids at my elementary school they were similar to me but also similar to the kid who was telling me those things right so they're like 50 50 like they were trying to do their thing but they weren't at the same time do you understand yeah i know what you mean yeah so i've experienced both sides because I've had uh, white kids think that I was going to hurt them in some way, shape, or form. I've had uh, black kids say that I'm white because I'm acting this way or doing yeah. this. Like, shoot, we I need mean, to go back to basketball on the basketball team. We, oh, were yeah. seen, we were seen as white until they saw me snap and start cussing out everybody. Then they're like, oh, now he's black. And I'm like, no. I've been black. I'll just piss me off. Exactly. But I ain't. But I ain't over. I'm not gonna claim. I'm not gonna be something I'm not. I'm not gonna throw up some set that I ain't never seen. Or because I'm like, there's very few people that that actually in that basketball team that we were on, like in the whole eighth grade year, who actually were part of that or actually were able to claim that. Like all of them were throwing yeah. up gang signs and stuff because they knew one. I can think of one for sure, and I'm not gonna say his name. Uh. Well, I can think of one for sure. You know him too. That that can actually claim and actually know what he's talking about. Everybody else is just like they met or they hung out with people and they throw up the gang signs and they're like, "We're gonna throw up four. And I'm like, "Man, nah, come on now." And I'm like, and they and then like even when they were, when they were talking about when we were in the locker room one time, we were talking about my friend Javen Javen Hall. It was like his football yeah. star dude, and I'm just like, and they were talking about him. So I was like, "You know Javen?" And then and then Jameer was like. How you know him? And I'm like, yeah, I know him. Uh, I played football with him for three years and stuff. And then he was asking me questions, and I was just like, and I answered them, and then I said, I haven't seen him in a minute. And then he was just like, oh, there go. And Jonah was like, this, there comes the black amount of him. And I'm like, and I, I, it ain't, and it ain't messing with me because I'm, I'm like, it is what it is. And I'm just like, no, nah, that's not how that works. Because I, because I don't sound like I'm always having a stroke when I talk or I enunciate my words, and it sounds like I read a book. So there is no white sound because white means education. And if we can just educate ourselves, we'll get rid of that stereotype. And if, again, if you control the media, you control the narrative. And it all ties into each other. No, I can um, justify why we are like that, right? What? So, you, so after slavery was abolished, blah, 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 segregation, all of that, right? The system put in our our race into those small yeah no it's it, at the end of the day it's self hatred so that is where we picked up gangs and drug yeah. violence and we're not, and we're not like, again it's not exclusive like there's gangs everywhere that's not it's not exclusive to black people but I'm saying it's when it comes to that self hatred that's so deep yeah. Like, no, the amount of people I've seen on my timeline, I'm sorry, I'll let you talk in a second, but, like, the amount of times I've seen on my timeline a woman to go, a black girl that, that we both know or we know in general, we are black women, we are powerful, we are beautiful, 
da 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 and then we'll have then we'll have weave in their hair in the same photo. Just blows my mind. I'm just like, you must think you ain't that beautiful because you don't even rock your natural look. Exactly. So, I mean, that's just what I see. Like in downtown, I, I see, I see it all the time. We are black women. We are powerful, and you got some hair extensions down to your feet. When in reality, your hair is all the way up here, and you won't even show the world how you really look. Exactly. You don't wear some fake pink and purple bullshit to look cute, and you think that's cute, and I'm like, dog, you don't even like yourself. How are you going to, actually, it goes back to hypocrisy. How are you going to say all these things and try to do all these things and when you haven't even gotten to yourself yet? And that includes uh, me and it includes you because we are all one people. At the end of the day, that's all that matters. Where, no matter what you want to divide yourself into, at the end of the day, we are all human. We are all one people. And if you need to stop putting, if you want to put variables to make yourself feel special, you'll see how how truly insignificant that mindset and how you really are if you think yeah. that way. But anyways, I think this is a good place to stop. Thank you so much for coming on, Alan. Uh, I love I love to have you back on. Uh, don't hang up. Um, thank you all for watching. Uh, stay safe and bye.